You may remember a few months ago I made a video about the journey inside the computer, Intel's chip kit for schools and colleges and universities. Before we begin, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And there's some videotapes in there to show to students and teachers, which are quite interesting. But along with this, Intel also made an entire movie called the journey inside. Tonight Jimmy's going where education and adventure meet head on inside the computer. A learning adventure in high technology and this is filmed in IMAX. Take a guided tour through the super clean world of a high tech computer chip factory. Explore the world inside the computer and hold on to your seat for a thrill ride through the heart of a microprocessor. This unusual experience is waiting for you in the journey inside. This family learning adventure follows 12 year old Jimmy on his race to foil an alien plot to slow the advancement of technology on Earth. Along the way, you and Jimmy will learn how computer chips are made and be introduced to the amazing microscopic world of computer chip technology. You won't want to miss it. No, you won't. This, of course, is directed by Alan Smithy, which is a well-known pseudonym directors use who want to kind of distance themselves from the final product. It's uh, 40 minutes long, and it was uh, created in 1994 and shown in selected cinemas around the USA. So I guess we'd better see what little Jimmy has been up to. It's been rewound, which is nice. This story is based on real people, real places, and real technology. Except for the aliens, of course. <laughs> Filmed in IMAX. If there was ever a waste of IMAX. And we're just zooming into processors to look at the transistors and how they're increasing. I mean this was kind of made because Intel was so proud of the processors they were making at the time. Directed by Alan Smithy, there it is. Ah, the lovely American dream. A massive house. The draft's due tomorrow. The whole presentation's the day after. Your part's supposed to be ready by now. This is a joint project, remember? The kid's got a, a joint project, portable remember? phone. This is 1994. He's got a fish tank. I can't just turn in my hat. Bloody hell. So what are you going to do? Now what am I supposed to do? I don't know, mate. You've got a room stuffed full of pretty cool stuff. Look at the computer he's got. What is that, an Aptiva? Hey, there was life before video games and computers, you know. <sighs> okay, before I get too jealous of this lad's possessions, here's the general gist of how this plays out. This lad lives in a massive house with amazing things. His dad comes in, presumably having walked nine miles from the west wing of the house, and sees an old movie from the 50s about aliens he remembers. The lad then moans about not knowing enough about microprocessors to do his homework, and a massive streak of light then flashes across the sky. Naturally, he goes to investigate and ends up in a cave, where some wacky antics are going down. Prepare the Earth suit for Abacus. <laughs> the Earth suit. Yeah, so this guy is Abacus. Well, he's an alien, and now he's got his incredible Earth suit on, he can share his dislike for Earth's technological progress. In the hundred years since our last visit, the Earth creatures have made enormous advances in technology. And, most alarming of all, they have created thinking machines, which they call computers. 
And now they have created the Project M microprocessor. I know what the plot of this film is, and he, tr trust me, right? You, you, you do not see it coming. With this much computer power, humans will soon be able to cross the critical information threshold. We have permitted this planet to survive only as a potential food source. Humans must never be allowed to cross the threshold. Sheet of energy. It was nothing, Abacus. To sabotage the development of this chip, we will disguise ourselves as human technicians to infiltrate the place they call the fab and prevent the chip's manufacture. This is a bit like an Intel board meeting nowadays against AMD. They will destroy the chip's gate oxide by reprogramming the furnace. I will change its plasma chemistry with this force field clamp. And I will disable the floating point adder at the third metal layer of every chip. Imagine wanting to cease that includes you, progress on Earth and rather than just no, do not disappoint me. blowing the plant so up, blowing the fab up with all their technology, they just say, oh, we'll infiltrate it and we'll put tiny bugs in the chip. What what kind of plan is this? So plan in hand, they crack open a juxtaportation window, presumably thrown in to sound cool, and fully suited up, descend into Intel's fab. Meanwhile, the kid craps a brick and sprints down to the fab, which is apparently just around the corner, where they. Dr. Clayton, where's Dr. Clayton? The aliens are in the fab. I need to talk to Dr. Clayton. Aliens? Well, they just let him in. The woman in charge of the fab also happens to teach his computer class. And so the battle to save the Pentium P54C processor, referred to as the M chip in this film, plays out. Jimmy, this is Doug Essex, one of our lead process engineers. Hi. Doug Essex. We've got a failure in the floating point unit. Oh, Doug, I don't understand this. Processor. This is the best bit of the film so far. Each transistor is a structure made of silicon atoms. I'm going to have to interrupt this feature presentation for one moment, not for a comfort break, but to thank my sponsor, Squarespace. If this was filmed today, the alien plan would no doubt be to take down Intel's website. If only they had a reliable and easy to use platform like Squarespace. You can build your website with incredible ease at Squarespace, pick a template you like and get going. No need to worry about mobile phone optimization either, it's all taken care of. Don't you just love modern times? Head on over to squarespace.com slash nostalgia nerd to get started for free. Then if you want to grab a package or even custom domain, use the code nostalgia nerd for 10% off. Okay, let's get back to the feature presentation. Pronto. We've had problems ever since the project began, but we've always fixed Doug, can you give me one more miracle? Can you buy us a couple more days? I wish I could, but you know how many times this demonstration has been delayed. I've bought us all the extra days we're going to get. We simply have to show working silicon tonight. Okay. <laughs> can I have a couple more days? No. Okay. The UN said something about temperature and... Some kind of oxide? <sighs> so where are we at? Well, by remembering what the aliens said roughly, the kid has convinced everyone that maybe, in fact, aliens may be to blame for the microprocessor faults, possibly. Maybe. So he goes off into the fab himself, because, you know, why not? And guess who's there? I'm gonna hear that music in my nightmares. And not because I'm scared. Yep, it's our bug-eyed friends, who apparently no one else notices, even though they have massive, obvious bug-eyes on their face. 
Anyway, eventually they rock on over to an electron microscope where Doug Essex is. What's he doing here? Get the f out, kid! And the kid says, maybe look at the calculator part. We're at the third metal layer. What part do you want to see? Um, the calculator. I mean, a lot of this information is covered on the videos and stuff in this pack. So, this film was kind of unnecessary. I, I think Intel just had a bit of a spare cash knocking about. And they were like, yeah, we want to make a film. Whilst this is going on, the aliens are in some back room formulating the final part of their genius master plan. It's an absolute corker. Yes, thanks to Jimmy's help, Doug Essex saves the day by fusing the open circuit, leading Abacus to move on to possibly one of the most convoluted takedowns ever known to grace cinema history. He had me fabricate this anti-matter bomb into an exact copy of the new chip. We are going to install it in their computer. When they switch the system on, the bomb will detonate. Everyone involved in the design and manufacture of the chip will be favorized. Okay, so their plan is to bomb the fab, but rather than just, you know, exploding it with a bomb from the outside, they've infiltrated, they've planted a bomb in a chip. They want that chip to be put into the demonstration computer, and when it's turned on, then they'll kill everyone. That's a lot of build up. These guys know how to do suspense better than any James Bond villain, that is for sure. <laughs> Come on! Get the kid, don't just give away your location by screaming in his face. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? Why is he just screaming at his face? He's in the computer! I must be inside the computer. Must be, ob obviously. Yeah, that's the first thought you'd have. Prepare to enter the computer. <laughs> that is a, a term I want to use daily. Oh, not, 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 not like that though. I mean, I like computers, but... So whilst the engineers are gearing up to power the computer on, the aliens replace the real CPU with their bomb CPU almost reminds me of an Atari ST. This causes some embarrassment for the team when they try to power on the demonstration system. This is embarrassing. Maybe we've got a bad connection. But Jimmy quickly acts to sort out the situation and restore the original processor. Well done, Jimmy. And he's just whacked the processor in with the power on, and it's booted straight into some sort of operating system. Windows galore. It's the fastest hard drive boot up I've ever seen in my life. But of course, it's not over. Jimmy has to dive back into full size and then deal with the aliens. So you know about those, do you? That's all right. In about 20 seconds, it won't matter. <laughs> Don't forget this. <laughs> oh, they are screwed. It was all a dream! Jimmy, wake up! Oh, God. Dad! Dad, did you see that flash? Flash? What flash? You must have been dreaming. Um, yeah, I 
Yes, I was. So, uh, what part did I miss? The part where Jimmy Douglas saves the microprocessor and his grade in science. And there we go, that is the end of the journey inside. A presentation of Intel. It's, it's an interesting watch, isn't it? Wait, I know we didn't get the full IMAX experience here, especially with it being on VHS, but at least we can find out some further details. It turns out that the real director was Barnaby Jackson, who had also worked on Back to the Future The Ride. Not quite the same pace of film, but you can see why he was brought on board. Abacus is actually played by Gustav Vintas, and even though he sounded a little drunk on this outing, you instantly recognise the similarity when stripped out of context. For a villain, he's an excellent choice. Sharon Mahoney, who played Dr Clayton, was also in 1993's Space Rangers, and is listed on IMDb as last playing in the TV series I Detective in 2003. The popcorn-wielding dad, played by Michael Dempsey, was last in the currently post-production drama Pacific Park. But he's been in lots of other minor to medium roles, including Lost and Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. As for Tim Farrell, who played Jimmy, well, he went on to be a sound editor on projects, including the last two I mentioned, but more recently Star Trek Discovery and even Picard. So that's nice. If you're keen to see this film in its entirety, check out the link below. Right, we can roll the credits properly now. See ya! one of the people who went to the cinema to see this in the 90s then please comment below I'd love to hear about your experience and if you had this in your school and you missed my previous video about it tell me about that as well because these two things in conjunction are a fascinating piece of 90s educational entertainment really and um, I'm glad that I've experienced them I hope you enjoyed it as well um, 